Between the mid-2000s and the early 2010s, the gospel industry was arguably the biggest music industry in Kenya. The gospel industry was so prominent and influential that the secular music sector became irrelevant. To understand just how big the industry was, in 2010, Daddy Owen, a gospel artist, won the MTV Mama Award in the Best Anglophone category. One key factor that significantly contributed to the success of this industry aside from the media was the Group Awards. So what happened to the Group Awards? Before we go any further, we would like to give a big shout out to Latif Liasi and all our supportive viewers who requested this video also please like the video and follow or subscribe to our channels if you haven't already now let's dive right in the group awards was founded by tycoon and businessman kevin mulay formerly known as dj kev Kevin Mulay had a vision to make the gospel industry the largest music sector in Kenya and create a platform for Kenyan gospel artists to showcase their talents, be appreciated and earn a living. Kev had an amazing vision and he executed it powerfully. The first Groove Awards were presented at a small gathering in Nairobi in 2004 and none of the winning artists received payment. But as the good book says, do not despise humble beginnings. In the following years, it experienced rapid growth, drawing numerous sponsors including Safaricom and other major companies. Every gospel artist aspired to be part of this initiative, and by 2007, it had become the biggest music award in Kenya, surpassing the likes of Chagua Latinis and Kisima Awards. Because of its popularity in the region, the award opened doors for artists from other East African countries, including Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. The event transitioned from a simple gathering to being broadcast live with artists touring the country. Money began to flow into the gospel industry. Gospel artists became household names and began to live lavishly. As they say, salvation ends where money talks begin. As the gospel industry became more profitable, we began to notice secular musicians crossing over to the gospel side. Well, that was the first red flag. Let's be clear, I don't want to come across as someone who attacks those who crossed over, as some of them like a money were genuine, but let's be honest, most of them did it for the money. They understood that to gain traction in the Kenyan music industry at that time, all you needed to do was release a gospel song. Even Bobby Mapesa, the artist behind the hit Naskeo Tam, dropped a gospel song. I'm not passing judgment, but really, it's Bobby Mapesa. <laughs> Ulikuja for two hours. Kwa niyo nasema hivyo. Ulikuja kwa trend. Last time ulikuwa kwa trend. Ulikuja kama umeokoka. Ulikuwa umeokoka before uingia on set. Alafu kwa ulizwa hee ni aje. Buma pesa umetua gospel song. The mami misja tua gospel song. As their work gained attention both within and beyond the gospel industry, organizers began inviting secular musicians to the event. Many of them were seen in the front rows and they even hired celebrities with no connection to spreading the gospel as MCs. I don't have an issue with that and won't pretend to be holier than thou, but even I know that the Bible says you can't serve two masters. The same Bible also warns against being lukewarm. You are either cold or hot, and if not, God will spit you out of his mouth. That marked the beginning of God spitting groove awards out of his mouth. And I think maybe that's why God had to take away groove. It became an idol. It became a place where we did song for the event. We never did song for God. Another warning sign that the award overlooked, especially in the late 2000s to the early 2010s, was the rise of a group of gospel artists who pretended to be born again. They even released some of the best gospel songs that went on to win numerous groove awards. I have a promise. I a promise. I promise. I God, stay kuwacha. Wasa usema wame chukua gospel umefanya showbiz? Aoni watu, mbona mungu waoni hivyo, mbona mungu waniambi hivyo. These artists became the face of the gospel industry, drawing negative attention due to their extravagant lifestyle. Scandalous articles about these gospel artists were a daily occurrence. They even introduced beefs within the industry, forcing fans to take sides. It became so toxic that some were eventually banned from the award. Last year, they claimed that the reason why you were not Ooh. nominated, Groove, because you did not live a Christian life, you did not exemplify what they consider to be a Christian life. That's why you and Bahati were not nominated. When things got tough, these fake gospel artists switched to the secular industry. Another factor that contributed to the downfall of Groove Awards was corruption. And as we know, where there's corruption, God cannot be involved. Sponsoring companies and artists began to complain about rigging. Daddy Owen, Willie Paul, Bahati and Echo Dida all raised concerns about this issue 
Consequently, Willie Paul and Bahati were withdrawn from the 2017 Groove Awards. Echo Dida, however, had no issue accepting the same award in 2017, an award he had previously criticized. Sitaji awards kuingia heaven. Awards ni vitu ziko, ni athlete things zanya ziko, zanya ile time god atakuita utaziacha. There were also numerous rumors suggesting that the award was being used for money laundering, further damaging its reputation. This was the final blow. Recognizing that the gospel industry was in decline. Kevin Mulay, as brilliant as he was, started a radio station. Interestingly, it wasn't a gospel radio station, but a secular one. Allegedly, Kevin Mulay used the funds from the Groove Awards, which some consider God's money, to launch NRG Radio. The marketing for that radio station was intense, with Kevin Mulay even hiring white people as brand ambassadors. The content of the radio station is what a born-again Christian might consider ungodly. Despite everything, we still have genuine individuals in the Kenyan gospel gospel industry. Shout out to Masi Masika, Guardian Angel, Eunice Njeri and all the gospel artists who continue to spread the gospel through their God-given talents. So what are your thoughts? Do you believe the gospel industry will ever regain the prominence it had during the Groove Awards era? And should Kevin Mulay consider bringing back the Groove Awards? Share your opinions in the comment section. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Your support means the world to us. Stay safe and we will see you in our next upload. Bless.